Townline today's event, the webinar in its entirety, will run approximately one hour, which includes a Q&A session. And if you have questions now or during the webinar, please enter those questions into the Q&A chat pod. We'll answer as many questions as time allows. Our speaker for today's webinar is Elizabeth Walther, FarmD JD, Associate Director for Strategic, Strategic Initiatives, Office of Non-Prescription Drugs, CEDAR. Please join me in welcoming our presenter for today's webinar, Dr. Walther. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Elizabeth Walther, and today I will provide an overview of the proposed rule, non-prescription drug product with an additional condition for non-prescription use. And for our FDA disclaimer, the opinions and information in this presentation are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of the FDA. Our learning objectives for today are to discuss how non-prescription drugs are marketed in the United States, explain the importance of labeling for non-prescription drugs, discuss the limitations of labeling for non-prescription drugs, and finally discuss FDA's proposed requirements for non-prescription drugs with an additional condition for non-prescription use. To start off with, it is important to remember that there are only two classes of drugs in the U.S. under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, prescription or non-prescription. There is no third class of behind-the-counter drugs like there are in some other countries, and nothing in the proposed rule that we will talk about today can change that. So when is a drug considered a prescription drug? Well, the Act tells us that a drug is regulated as prescription if it is not safe for use except under the supervision of a healthcare practitioner because of toxicity, method of use, or other collateral measures necessary for use of the product, such as required monitoring. A drug can be non-prescription if it can be used safely and effectively by a consumer without the supervision of a healthcare practitioner. There are two ways to bring a non-prescription drug to market in the U.S., the application process and the OTC drug review. Under the drug application process, an application, a new drug application or an abbreviated new drug application, is submitted to FDA for approval. That application includes information about safety and effectiveness of the drug. The drug cannot be marketed until FDA approves that drug application. For non-prescription drugs, FDA must determine whether the information submitted as part of an application is sufficient to ensure that the drug product is safe and effective for non-prescription use. An OTC monograph drug can be marketed without FDA approval if the drug complies with the requirements of Section 505G of the Act, as well as any applicable conditions of the OTC monograph. But today, we are just focused on the drug application process. Again, we are talking about the drug application process. And this diagram shows where the application for a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU, the products that we're going to talk about today, fit in. Because there is no healthcare provider involved, non-prescription drugs must be labeled with adequate directions for use so that consumers can self-select and use the non-prescription drug product on their own. But how do we know if consumers can self-select or use a drug product? Well, we use consumer studies to help demonstrate that the requirement for adequate directions for use is met. Non-prescription drug products must comply with all of the applicable labeling requirements, including the drug facts label, also known as the DFL. These are the well-known requirements in 21 CFR 201.66. The DFL is intended to help enable consumers to appropriately self-select and use the non-prescription drugs safely and effectively. In addition to the DFL, FDA may also approve additional labeling for the drug. For example, FDA may approve a consumer package insert for a drug product. In many ways, the DFL has worked very well. With the DFL, consumers can make informed purchase choices and safely use the drugs. Multiple label comprehension studies have shown that the DFL is helpful in conveying the most important safety messages to consumers 
and consumers know where to look for information that is relevant to them. However, the DFL also has some limitations, namely it has very limited space to tell a consumer everything that they need to know. For certain drugs, this limitation of labeling presents challenges for being able to adequately communicate all the information that a consumer may need to know in order to self-select and use a non-prescription drug. So due to the limitations of the DFL, FDA started to consider the following question. In what other ways can sponsors deliver information to consumers to ensure appropriate self-selection and appropriate actual use of the non-prescription drug? How can sponsors leverage technology to develop innovative approaches to deliver this information to consumers? FDA has received a number of inquiries about this, and so FDA held a public hearing and participated in a series of workshops convened by the Brookings Institution to solicit public input on expanding the approval of non-prescription drug products. We use all of this input to develop the proposed rule. So this summer, on June 28th, FDA announced the availability of the long-awaited proposed rule entitled Non-Prescription Drug Product with an Additional Condition for Non-Prescription Use. The proposed rule, if finalized, would establish the requirements for a non-prescription drug product with an additional condition for non-prescription use. It is intended to increase the options for applicants to develop and market safe and effective non-prescription drug products when labeling is insufficient to ensure safe and effective use of the product. As a reminder, there are only two classes of drugs in the U.S., prescription and non-prescription under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Non-prescription drug products with an ACNU are at the end of the day just non-prescription drugs, and all of the principles that we just went over on non-prescription drugs continue to apply. So today we're going to go over the proposed rule. In addition to applicable existing application requirements, the proposed rule, if finalized, would establish additional application requirements. First off, what is an additional condition for non-prescription use, or an ACNU? Well, FDA is proposing to define the term as one or more FDA-approved conditions that an applicant of a non-prescription drug product must implement to ensure consumers appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both of the non-prescription drug product without the supervision of a healthcare practitioner if the applicant demonstrates and FDA determines that labeling alone is insufficient to ensure appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both. This is a very long definition that is packed full of information. But this proposed definition for an ACNU is intentionally broad to give applicants flexibility regarding the types of additional conditions that an applicant may propose and how those additional conditions can be implemented. So it's a bit of a challenge to understand this concept of ACNU and its definition. So let's use some examples to help illustrate what an ACNU is. So to start off, in order to purchase a non-prescription drug product, the ACNU requires all consumers to complete a self-selection test on a mobile app to determine whether the drug product is appropriate for the consumer. Or another example, before a consumer is able to purchase the drug product, the consumer needs to watch a video that describes how to use the drug product and respond to a question to confirm understanding prior to purchasing the product. But an ACNU is not labeling. An ACNU is something beyond labeling. However, an ACNU may utilize labeling. For example, the ACNU is the requirement that the consumer take the self-selection test to purchase the drug product. But the list of questions to be answered by the consumer in the self-selection test are labeling. So when can an applicant propose an ACNU? Well, after an applicant has optimized the DFL and other labeling with iterative testing and the applicant demonstrates that labeling is not sufficient, 
to ensure that the consumer can appropriately self-select or use or both a drug product correctly in a non-prescription setting, only then may an applicant propose an ACNU. We'll talk more about this part of the application requirement in a little bit. The evidentiary standards remain unchanged. The evidentiary standard that an application must meet under the Act and current FDA regulations to demonstrate the safety and effectiveness of the drug product continues to apply. Again, these are non-prescription drugs. A drug will only be approved for non-prescription use if the FDA determines that it is safe and effective to use without the supervision of a healthcare practitioner. The proposed rule would apply to NDAs and ANDAs. Currently marketed NDAs and ANDAs for non-prescription drug products do not need an ACNU to ensure appropriate self-selection and appropriate actual use because FDA has already previously determined that labeling alone was sufficient to ensure that consumers could safely and effectively use the drug without a prescription. The proposed rule would not apply to OTC monograph drugs. Those are the drugs that are marketed under Section 505G of the Act. Therefore, a requester cannot submit a request under 505G of the Act for a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU. Applicants would be required to submit a separate application. The proposed rule would not require that the product first be marketed as a prescription drug product. However, in cases where there is an approved prescription drug product, initial approval for the non-prescription drug with an ACNU cannot be obtained through a supplement to the approved application. Requiring a separate application is most important for continued access to the prescription drug product along with the availability of the non-prescription drug product approved with an ACNU. This would ensure greater access to drugs by providing flexibility in how to obtain them. In addition to applicable existing application requirements, the proposed rule, if finalized, would establish additional application requirements, and we're going to highlight some of those today. In addition to existing application requirements, Additional information would be required to be submitted in the new drug application. We're going to go over each of these requirements in a little more detail. But first, we will go over an example of the fictitious non-prescription drug product, Drug X, that we used in the proposed rule to provide a simplified illustration of a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU. We will use this example to help us understand the specific application requirements for an ACNU. This is only one type of example, and there are many, many other types of ACNUs that could be proposed. Drug X is for the treatment of symptom Y in adults who have a disease-specific risk score below the threshold for developing serious side effect E when taking drug X. As part of the development program, the applicant conducted robust self-selection and label comprehension studies using optimized labeling, including both a DFL and other labeling. The results of the studies demonstrated that consumers could not appropriately self-select drug X with labeling alone. FDA acknowledged that these self-selection and labeling studies were well-designed and conducted with optimized labeling and concur. The results of the study show that while consumers could recognize they had symptom Y, they could not calculate the risk of developing side effect E. The ACNU is to aid the consumer with self-selecting. The ACNU requires the consumer to complete a questionnaire located on a secure website created by the applicant to determine if drug X is appropriate for the consumer. This is an underlying program or other operating information used by a secure website to calculate the risk score for serious side effect E using the consumer answers and determines if the consumer has an acceptable risk score to use drug X. Consumers with an acceptable risk score can purchase drug X on the applicant's secure website. The proposed rule would require a statement regarding the purpose of the ACNU. The statement would indicate whether the ACNU is for appropriate self-selection, appropriate actual use, or both. 
So if we're thinking about drug X, the purpose of the ACNU is for appropriate self-selection. The proposed rule would require the applicant to explain why the ACNU is necessary to ensure appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both by consumers of the non-prescription drug. The applicant must explain why labeling alone cannot be sufficient for the purposes of meeting the approval requirements for the non-prescription drug product. The applicant may include a summary of the adequate data or other information that is submitted as part of the application to explain why labeling is insufficient. For drug X, the applicant could explain why the consumers could not appropriately self-select the drug product. Although the consumers could self-select for symptom Y, the consumers could not understand the risk of developing serious side effect E. The proposed rule would require the applicant to describe how the ACNU ensures appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both by consumers. For example, with drug X, the applicant would describe that the ACNU requires a consumer to complete a questionnaire located on a website created by the applicant that would assist in calculating a consumer's risk score for developing serious side effect E. The questionnaire would determine whether drug X is appropriate for the consumer. The applicant may be expected, among other things, to justify the appropriateness of the self-selection questions, including the criteria and or considerations used in calculating the risk score for a particular consumer. This may include a description of the algorithm in the underlying program or other operating information used by the website that calculates the risk score for serious side effect E to determine if the consumer has an acceptable risk score to use drug X. The applicant would also describe how a consumer with an acceptable risk score can then purchase drug X. The proposed rule would require a description of the key elements. The description of the key elements must include the additional condition or conditions implemented by the applicant to be fulfilled by the consumer to be able to obtain or use the non-prescription drug with an ACNU, the labeling specifically associated with the ACNU, and the criteria by which the consumer would successfully fulfill the ACNU including a description of the specific actions to be taken by a consumer or required responses to be provided by a consumer. For example, labeling specifically associated with drug X would include the carton and container annotated with the elements specific to the ACNU. All questions in the questionnaire would be submitted as labeling. The applicant for drug X would describe the criteria by which the consumer would fulfill the ACNU including the questions and all potential consumer responses that would determine that drug X was appropriate or not appropriate for the consumer. The proposed rule would require an applicant to include data or other information that demonstrates the necessity of the ACNU to ensure appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both. To do so, the applicant must conduct or reference adequate testing to show that labeling alone would not support the safe and effective use of the non-prescription drug product. For example, the applicant of drug X would submit adequate data from robust self-selection studies and label comprehension studies that demonstrate that consumers could not appropriately self-select drug X with labeling alone. Alternatively, when FDA has previously signaled that labeling alone is not sufficient, the applicant can submit information explaining the necessity of the ACNU for appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both. This might apply if FDA has previously approved multiple non-prescription drug products for the same indication with a similar ACNU. The applicant must also submit adequate data or information that demonstrates the effect of the ACNU on appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both by consumers of the non-prescription drug. The data must show that consumers can appropriately self-select or use the drug safely and effectively with the ACNU. The applicant of drug X would submit adequate data from robust self-selection studies 
that demonstrate that consumers could appropriately self-select drug X with the ACNU. The proposed rule would require that the applicant describe the specific way the ACNU is operationalized. While it is important for FDA to understand how the ACNU is operationalized, because this is part of achieving appropriate self-selection or use, the specific way an ACNU is operationalized is not a key element of the ACNU. The purpose of the ACNU is to enable self-selection and appropriate actual use. The ACNU can be operationalized in different ways, provided it reliably meets this objective. For drug X, we have the consumer taking a questionnaire on a website. Alternatives to the way the ACNU is operationalized might include administering the questionnaire on a display screen at a pharmacy kiosk, administering the questionnaire using a mobile application, or administering the questionnaire using an automated telephone response system. These examples differ in the way the ACNU is operationalized in that it's how the, the questionnaire is being administered, but the key elements, including the questions in the questionnaire and responses that ensure appropriate self-selection remain the same. In addition to other reasons cited in existing regulations, FDA would refuse to approve an application for a non-prescription drug with an ACNU if FDA has determined that the applicant failed to demonstrate that labeling is insufficient to ensure consumers appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both of the non-prescription drug without the supervision of a healthcare practitioner, or if the applicant failed to demonstrate that its proposed ACNU is adequate to ensure appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both by consumers without the supervision of a healthcare practitioner. FDA may approve an application for a non-prescription drug product with technologies that do not meet the definition of an ACNU. In cases where FDA determines that labeling alone is sufficient to enable appropriate cell selection or actual use of the drug product, the labeling statement specifically required for the non-prescription drug product with an ACNU under the proposed rule must not appear on the drug product labeling. Today, we're just going to touch on ANDAs, but an applicant may submit an ANDA referencing a listed drug that has been approved with an ACNU. In addition to the existing application requirements, the ANDA must state the purpose of the ACNU, which is the same purpose as the ACNU for the reference listed drug. They must include information demonstrating that the key elements of the proposed ACNU are the same as the key elements of the ACNU for the reference listed drug. And the ANDA must include information on the way the ANDA applicant intends to operationalize the proposed ACNU. Under the proposed rule, a prescription drug product and a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU that contain the same active ingredient can be simultaneously marketed even if they do not have other meaningful differences, such as different indications or different strengths. The prescription drug and the non-prescription drug with the ACNU are two different products because the ACNU constitutes a meaningful difference between the prescription drug product and the non-prescription drug product. Now that we have talked a bit about the application requirements, let's talk about some of the proposed labeling requirements. The non-prescription drug product with an ACNU must comply with applicable labeling requirements for non-prescription drugs, including the DFL requirements. FDA may currently approve labeling for non-prescription drug products in addition to the DFL, and this would continue for non-prescription drugs approved with an ACNU. For example, FDA could approve information leaflets or other documents contained inside the carton or container for a non-prescription drug product including for a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU. The proposed rule would require the label to include a statement under the directions heading in the DFL that would direct the consumer on where or how to find the ACNU and to not use the drug without completing the ACNU. The proposed statement would remind the original purchaser 
and alert persons other than the original purchaser that the product is not suitable for all individuals and should only be used after fulfilling the ACNU. A specific ACNU statement must also appear on the principal display panel of the label, and you can see it here. You must complete an extra step to see if this drug is safe for you before you use it. Do not take this drug without completing this step. See the drug facts labeling for more information. The purpose of this statement is similar to the one in the directions. It's to alert people that may have access to the drug pro product, including the individual who originally purchased the drug product and others such as family members, that these non-prescription drug products are not suitable for everyone and should only be used after fulfilling the ACNU. The proposed rule would exempt a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU from the statutory requirement to be labeled with adequate directions for use, provided that certain conditions are met. Consistent with the proposed definition of an ACNU, a drug product can only be approved with an ACNU if the applicant demonstrates and FDA determines that labeling alone is insufficient to ensure appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both. The labeling along with the ACNU are sufficient to ensure consumers appropriate self-selection and use of the drug. Therefore, the adequate directions for use would not be necessary for the protection of public health. This is a really important provision to understand because until this is finalized, FDA cannot approve a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU. The proposed rule also includes post-marketing reporting requirements. NDA and the applicants would need to report to FDA information concerning any incident of failure in the implementation of an ACNU using the FDA Adverse Event Reporting System, or FAIRS. The proposed rule provides details for content and timing of submitting the reports. A failure in implementation of an ACNU includes any event that results from a deviation in the applicant's implementation of the ACNU, where the consumer accessed or used the drug product without successfully fulfilling the ACNU, where the consumer successfully fulfilled the ACNU but could not access or use the drug, or the consumer was unable to make an attempt to fulfill the ACNU. Again, the proposed rule published in June of 2022, and the public comment period closed at the end of November. The comments submitted to FDA can be viewed at any time in the docket. FDA is currently reviewing the comments in order to finalize the proposed rule, and we are working to finalize the rule as soon as possible. We also intend to issue guidance to provide recommendations on how to fulfill the requirements in the rule. So that is an overview of the proposed rule. And now we will do our two challenge questions. So challenge question number one, true or false? Currently, there are two classes of drugs in the US, prescription and non-prescription. If the proposed rule is finalized, there will be three classes of drugs in the U.S. False, there are only two classes of drugs in the U.S. Under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, we only have prescription and non-prescription drugs. And non-prescription drugs approved with an ACNU are at the end of the day just non-prescription drugs, and all of the principles of non-prescription drugs continue to apply. Challenge question two, true or false, an ACNU is labeling. False, an ACNU is not labeling. An ACNU is something beyond labeling. However, the ACNU may utilize labeling. I wanna thank you for attending today's presentation and please reach out to us if you have any questions. Here is also a list of resources for you to use. And we look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walther, for that great presentation. We'll now transition into our Q&A session. And if you haven't had a chance to enter your questions in the Q&A chat pod, please do so now. 
We'll answer as many questions as time allows. Looks like we have a few questions rolling in right now. Just given just a second for those to populate everything. All right, and here is the first question for Dr. Walther. If the FDA already approved a non-prescription drug, does FDA now submit an application for a non-prescription drug with an ACNU for that product? Thanks, Ray. Okay, so the first question is, you know, is a product marketed already as non-prescription? Would we ever see a case where the non-prescription drug, an application would be submitted for an ACNU for that product? And the ac answer is no. FDA has previously determined that labeling alone was sufficient for that product to ensure safe uh, self-selection and appropriate actual use by the consumers. So these non-prescription drugs that are marketed would not need an ACNU. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We do have a few more questions coming in right now. And here is the next question. Does the proposed rule apply to OTC monograph drugs? Thanks, right? No, uh, the proposed rule does not apply to OTC monograph drugs. And, you know, our office has been, has been having a lot of webinars on OTC monograph drug products lately. Uh, but no, this would not apply. Um, the rule, the proposed rule would only apply to non-prescription drugs marketed under a new drug, drug application or an abbreviated drug, new, new drug application. It would not apply to OTC monograph drugs marketed under Section 505G of the Act. Thank you for responding to that question. We do have a few more questions coming in right now. And here is the next question. Under the proposed rule, could there be a generic version of a brand non-prescription drug product with an ACNU? So yes, applicants seeking approval of an ANDA or a generic drug, uh, they can seek approval for that drug. Those applicants would submit an ANDA referencing the non-prescription drug with an ACNU that was previously approved under an NDA. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have a ne our next question for Dr. Walter is the following. Does the ANDA applicant have to copy exactly what the NDA applicant does? So no, as with all ANDAs, the ANDA would need to be pharmaceutically equivalent uh, and bioequivalent to the reference listed drug or the brand name drug. Um, the ANDA would need to have the same key elements as the ACNU approved for the reference listed drug or the brand name drug. However, the generic applicant could propose a different way to operationalize the proposed ACNU. And this is a topic that we specifically sought comment on in the proposed rule. Um, so for example, uh, an ANDA applicant may consider proposing to make available on the internet a self-selection aid for its non-prescription drug with an ACNU, whereas the self-selection aid for the reference listed drug or the brand name was made available at a, at a physical store um, via an electronic display. So if, if the ANDA does propose a different approach to operationalize, the ANDA applicant would just need to submit information to show that that the purpose of, of the ACNU achieves the same purpose as is that for the ACNU for the brand name. Thanks. Thank you for responding to that question. And we do have some more questions coming in. And here is the next question. Are there specific drugs or drug classes that are the focus of this proposed rule? That's a good question, Ray. And no, 
the agency is not targeting any uh, particular class of drugs or a particular drug with this proposed rule. Uh, the rule was really written to be flexible in order to allow industry to be uh, to, to innovate. Thank you for responding to that question. We do have some more questions. And here is the next question. Why is the agency coming out with this proposed rule now? And why did it take so long? Thanks, Ray. We definitely appreciate this comment. Rulemaking is a long process. Uh, and, you know, the proposed rule is describing a really novel paradigm in order to promote innovation. Um, so, you know, FDA did a lot of work um, and with our partners and stakeholders uh, before issuing the proposed rule. We held public hearings, we participated in a series of workshops in order to get public comment on, on this innovative approach. And we also, you know, we look at all available information to ensure that this proposed rule would balance access and patient safety. Thanks, Ray. Thank you for responding to that question. We do have more questions coming in right now. And here is the next question. How long will it take FDA to finalize the rule? Well, we are actively working to finalize this rule as soon as we can. Uh, the public comment period closed at the end of November, and so we are currently reviewing all submitted comments. Thank you for responding to that question. And here is the next question. Will this really benefit consumers and patients? The proposed rule is intended to increase the options for applicants, again, to innovate and market safe products for consumers. And this really could improve public health by broadening the types of non-prescription drug products that are, are available and are on the market. And hopefully that this greater access to medical products um, would, would empower consumers in their healthcare decision making. Thank you for responding to that question. We just had another question that came in and here is the question. Does the approach and the proposed rule increase risks to the consumer by removing input from a patient's doctor? So thank you. But at the end of the day, it's just a reminder that non-prescription drugs approved with an ACNU are non-prescription drugs. And so the rule isn't changing any of the evidentiary standard that we need to approve a drug as non-prescription. So that means without the supervision of a healthcare provider. And so the, the sponsor must still demonstrate that consumers can use the product safely and effectively on their own without the supervision of the healthcare practitioner. And so FDA's review process is is well designed to balance that risk and benefit of each drug and to ensure that the products that are approved um, under this proposed rule uh, are, are appropriate. Thank you for that clarification on that, on that question. We appreciate that. And we do have more questions coming in right now. And here's the next question. How can the consumer obtain a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU if they choose not to complete the ACNU or can't fulfill the conditions of the ACNU? Okay, so the consumer would still be able to go to their doctor uh, to, to determine if the prescription version of the drug was right for the patient. So this goes to two really important provisions in the rule. And so this is a really good question. Um, one provision in the rule is, 
is that a new application must be submitted for the non-prescription drug with the ACNU. And this provision is important because it helps to maintain that prescription drug um, for especially for consumers that cannot complete the ACNU or, or wouldn't fulfill the requirements of, of the ACNU. Um, and, and it also then allows for other consumers to, to obtain the, the drug as non-prescription. And secondly, the other provision that's important in the rule uh, that goes to this question is that the, the rule permits the simultaneous marketing of a drug. Um, and what that means is basically that the prescription drug and the non-prescription uh, dr the prescription drug and the non-prescription drug with the ACNU can be marketed at the same time, even if they have the same active ingredient and the same indication, because that ACNU um, serves as that meaningful difference. So thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. And here is the next question. It's a little bit longer, so I can repeat it if you need me to. The proposed rule mentions that the agency may approve additional labeling such as leaflets, audio messages, etc. for non-prescription drug products. How does the agency determine if additional labeling is needed and what data sources is it using to arrive at its decisions? So this um, FDA already approves additional labeling uh, for products uh, such as leaflets uh, and, and, and other things like that. So we, this is something that FDA already does. Um, for example, with some nasal products, uh, we've approved consumer leaflets um, and for nicotine replacement products, we have additional labeling that has additional information on how to quit smoking. So again, FDA has and will continue to approve additional labeling for products beyond the drug facts labeling. And what was the second part of the question? All right, I'll be happy to read that. So the second part of the question is, what data sources are being used to arrive at its decisions. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. So consumer studies are used. Um, so we talk about the consumer studies as being label comprehension studies, self-selection studies, actual use studies, and that can help to inform whether additional labeling is, is appropriate for a particular product beyond the drug facts label. <laughs> Thank you for responding to that multi-part question. We just had a few more questions come in, and here's the next question. How will industry prove that their ACNU is acceptable? Sorry, over here. I, I just broke something in my office, but I, I got this one, Ray. I got it. Um, so let's go back to the definition of an ACNU. Uh, remember, it's that super, super long definition, uh, very legal, very legal, and it's packed full of information. So let me just read that definition to you. So one more time, an ACNU is one or more FDA approved conditions that an applicant of a non-prescription drug must implement to ensure consumers appropriate self-selection or appropriate actual use or both of the non-prescription drug product without the supervision of a healthcare practitioner if the applicant demonstrates and FDA determines that labeling alone is insufficient to ensure appropriate self-selection, appropriate actual use, or both. So again, tons of information packed in there. So first, let's go to the first part of the definition. The applicant must demonstrate that optimized labeling, including your drug facts labeling and other labeling, is not sufficient. And it's not sufficient. And we know this, and you can demonstrate this using consumer studies 
Again, those label comprehension studies, human factor studies, self-selection, actual use studies. Um, and, and again, this, this really long definition, it, it, it's really broad. So it doesn't give you information on the type of condition. And, and that's so that applicants can have flexibility on what they can pr propose and, and how those conditions would be implemented. So then after they've demonstrated that labeling isn't sufficient, and they propose an ACNU, then the applicant needs to submit data or information that demonstrates the effect of the ACNU. So they need to show basically that with the ACNU, the consumer can then self-select or use the drug product. So again, you would look at then the consumer study would look at the ACNU in addition to the drug facts labeling and see if the consumer can then self-select or use the product. And, and they, the applicant may use a self-selection study um, to, to demonstrate this. So, uh, of course, it's, it's a very complex stepwise process that, that um, an applicant would need to go through to, to show that an ACNU is really necessary. Because, again, we, we want labeling to be sufficient if, if it can be. And so we encourage applicants to meet with us to, to discuss with us uh, any questions that arise during the development program. Thank you for responding to that question. Do we have a few more questions coming in? We've got about six minutes left, so we'll try to get most of those in. And here is the next question. Can a non-prescription drug with an ACNU be considered a drug device combination product if technology is used as part of the ACNU. So this this would be a very product specific question, and definitely in in certain situations, a non prescription drug product uh, with an ACNU could be considered a drug device combination. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. <clears throat> Here's one that actually involves CDRH, and here is the question. Would CDRH be involved in the review process if technology like a mobile app is used? So thank you. That's a really good follow-on question to the previous one. So again, in some cases, a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU may meet the definition of a combination product and therefore all the, the relevant requirements for, for a device and a combination product would be in play and CDRH would, would definitely be involved in, in the review. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. And the next question is the following. Will FDA be approving switches using these principles before the rule is finalized? So that's a that's a very good question. Um, and we, we did go over this in in the slide presentation. But first, I do want to clarify something. Um, these are not these are not switches as we traditionally think of prescription to non-prescription switches. And um, again, that where there's already an approved prescription drug product, the non-prescription drug product with an ACNU can't be approved through a supplement to that prescription drug application. The applicant has to submit a separate application for the non-prescription drug with an ACNU. So that's, that's the first um, thing there is to understand. Um, and so second, and, and again, we, we covered this in the presentation, but can FDA approve the product before the rule is finalized? The answer to that is, is no. Um, and the reason for that is that exemption from adequate directions for use. Um, so again, there's that statutory requirement that a product be labeled with adequate directions for use. And um, we need that, that proposed rule um, provision 
to exempt a non-prescription drug product with an ACNU from that statutory requirement. And, and we would say that the labeling along with the ACNU is sufficient then to ensure the consumer's appropriate self-selection of the product. So until we finalize the rule and especially that exemption from adequate directions for use that's in the proposed rule, we cannot approve a non-prescription drug with an ACNU. And, and again, I, I recognize this is a really important question for, for those um, in industry. So thank you for that question. Uh, thank you for responding to that question. We've got just a couple more minutes left, so we're going to try to get some more questions in. And here is the next question. Will FDA issue guidance to assist sponsors in designing their programs to accommodate these new requirements? So thank you. That is one of the easier questions of the day. But yes, we do intend to issue guidance to provide recommendations that industry may need. Thank you for responding to that question. Here's the next question we're going to try to get in. Under the Act New Rule, does the agency envision the drug facts label and labeling specific to the Act New to be mutually reinforcing elements and, therefore, should be developed, tested, and submitted in tandem throughout the program? So developing labeling is a, is a very complex uh, process and anybody in industry who's ever developed a label understands that, especially in the non-prescription space when we need consumers to understand the information in there. And so like always, FDA recommends uh, that, that sponsors conduct iterative testing to optimize that DFL and um, and any other proposed labeling and of course you know we recommend always that sponsors meet with fda to obtain any advice on consumer studies the timing of the studies um, um, before those studies are are conducted so thank you thank you for responding to that question we've got time hopefully just to squeeze in one more final question here is the question. Does the agency envision that labeling specific to the ACNU would be tested in a label comprehension study and later part of a self-selection and actual use study? So again, you know, we recognize that that the labeling and the testing and, and how this is all going to go is is a is definitely a, a big question for industry of, of how these development programs are, are going to go. Um, and again, labeling is an iterative process to get to get those labels right. And there is testing and retesting um, to make sure that consumers really understand what is in that label. And it, it's complex, and, and we know that it takes time to proceed through each stages of development. And, and we know that, that applicants want to kind of rush through and, and get, to, get to the ACNU, but, but we need to ensure that, that the applicants are really proceeding in a stepwise function, get your label right, contest your label through that iterative process, and then move forward. And if an ACNU is in fact necessary, then they can propose it. But again, you, you need to have that labeling right. So thanks for all the questions. Well, that's all the time we have for questions. A huge thank you to Dr. Walther for the very informative and timely talk and also for responding to numerous questions that came in. We do have a few closing reminders. This activity is eligible for an attendance certificate which supports Continued Education by SOCRA, RAPS, SQA, and ACRP. Please refer to our website at fde.gov forward slash CDRSBIA for more details. You'll be able to obtain the attendance certificate only upon completion of the survey, which will be open for two weeks. Remember, that's February the 15th. Please remember to download the certificate immediately upon completing the survey. It cannot be retrieved after the fact. Let us know your comments and feedback via the survey. 
This will help guide the design of our future events. Additional tutorials are available through fda.gov forward slash cedar learn. To summarize for our physicians, pharmacists, and nurses claiming the one hour of continuing education credit, attendees have 14 days from the last day of the activity to log in, complete the required CE evaluations, and attest to their attendance to claim credit. So be sure to complete the CE evalu session evaluation on or before February the 15th. As a reminder, the email we send out today to attendees will have information on both the CE claim code and the survey link. On behalf of Cedar Small Business and Industry Assistance, we hope you enjoyed today's presentation and found it helpful. We look forward to your presence at future webinars, which will be advertised on our website at fda.gov forward slash Cedar SBIA. Thank you for attending, and this concludes today's webinar.